Hello everyone, this is Pastor Terry going live tonight. I didn't put out a thoughtful cud today because I've been thinking about something all day long and praying about the situation in our country. And uh, I want to read you something tonight. And I hope that this goes all over because I think there's a lot of people that need to hear this. But I'm going to read this to you because I communicate best when I write and I can communicate the best when I read what I've written and not just go off of just strictly emotions and put my thoughts together. So I want to say this over the last several days, I've grieved with a broken heart the travesties that I've seen and heard across our country. It's broken my heart that any human being would do what is being done right now. It feels at times like my heart has been ripped out of my chest because of the actions taken by far too many. You might say it should come and should be because I'm a pastor and, and you're to love people like that, but I tell you it has nothing to do with being a pastor. It has nothing to do with being a pastor at all. And that, you know, Really, it's all about being a human being who cares and loves people and doesn't want to see anybody treated in a way that is cruel and unjust. And this goes for George Floyd or any other person, people group, color group, ethnic group, whatever term or phrase you want to put on it. I'm grieved and heartbroken to the point I cannot and will not stay silent anymore. I think of several statements that Martin Luther King Jr. said. The ultimate tragedy, he said, is not the oppression and cruelty by the bad people, but the silence over that by the good people. And he also said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of materiality tied in a single garment of destiny. And whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. I know this, as Martin Luther also reminds us that the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. This is not a time of comfort for me, and it shouldn't be, and it shouldn't be for any other man or woman that calls themselves an American and especially a Christian. No, these are times of great challenge and controversy because we have injustices being done. And they aren't coming only from one side or the other. They're, they're coming from both sides. And truly, this is not about taking sides, but it's about what is right and what is wrong. It's about treating each and every human being with dignity and respect as God created us to be. It's about loving one another like God created us to love because love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. And you might say to me this, you might say to me this, you don't know what it's like to be in my shoes and you're right. I haven't walked in your shoes. I don't know your pain. I don't know your grievances. I don't know what you've been through or even what you're going through right now. And how could I when I can't be you? Nor did you communicate it to me. But that doesn't mean I don't care. And it doesn't mean I don't love you. I'm not putting down or minimizing what you have gone through, walked through. I'm not putting down or minimizing your pain or your grievances. And I'm not putting down or minimizing what you're going through right now. But I know that nonviolence is a powerful tool and a weapon. And love is a greater tool and weapon that if used wisely, it can break down anything and it can also build up anything. Communication is a powerful tool and a weapon that if combined with love can change people and structures, governments, and nations and the world. 
God said it best, I believe, in Proverbs 15.1 when he said, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. See, a gentle answer from a loving heart can change everything. But a harsh word is not going to bring about a peaceful solution, but a violent response. For me, I've decided to stick with love. Hate and bitterness are both too great of a burden for me to carry in my life. Your anger may be great, and your bitterness and loss of confidence and hope in systems and structures may be lost, but I appeal to you in this. Number one, God sees your pain and your grievances. He's not unaware. Call out to him and ask him to help you with your pain, your worries, your anxieties, everything. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And number two, ask God for wisdom and how to make your issue known and not overlooked. Communicate it to people in a nonviolent way. He says this in James chapter 1, verse 5, if, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. And last but not least, number three, seek the kingdom of God. See, Matthew 6, 33 says, seek first his kingdom, God's kingdom, and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. See, God loves and cares about you. Whether you think he does or not, he does. But more than just your time on this earth, he cares about your eternity. He wants you to experience him now and forever. See, there are good people out there that love and care about you. And we're in this together. People are all over are going through tough stuff and hard stuff right now. And there are those that will stand with you for what is right. We see it right now in many good examples like peaceful protests that are nonviolent. We see it because there are people that are standing up and saying enough is enough. And there must be change. The racism, the violence, it must stop. There must be change. I don't know where this finds you at right now, but in my heart breaks for what's going on and what I watch. And even this morning, as I mentioned in this, I've watched things on video, I've seen stuff live, and it breaks my heart that people would even think about treating other people like they're treating them right now. God wants us to love each other. And yeah, I'm not saying there's not issues because there are, but there's a different way to handle it that we can bring about a resolution, a solution to things in a whole lot better way. So I pray that, that God does something in all of our hearts. I think the things that are happening has maybe wakened a lot of people up. And if you'll allow me, I just want to pray with you before I get off here. Lord, I thank you that you are a God of love. And God the men and women that are gonna be listening to this, the people that are gonna be listening to this are your creation. And you've created each one of us for purpose. And that purpose is not violence, it is not hate, it is not bitterness, but it is love. You've created us for precious and good things. And I pray that people all over that would hear this would have a change of heart that God, that they would listen to your voice as you call out to them and that they would heal your heart. They would hear your heart of love calling to them. And if they're doing the violence, God, that they would have a change of heart to stop doing that violence, whether it's looting or rioting or hurting other people in one fashion or another. I pray that you will touch their heart and change it and help and forgive us for those of us who have not stood up sooner and said what needed to be said and so to say held people's feet to the fire and, and done it in a way that expresses the concern in our hearts, the love that we have for people. Help us to know and have wisdom in how to do that now as we move forward in these days. Now just bless your people, protect people out there and in this violence we ask 
In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.